In summer 2020, a new study from the University of California has demonstrated the technical and economic feasibility of achieving 90% clean, carbon-free electricity in the United States by 2035. The cheapest energy projects anywhere in the world last year and the year before and the year before were all solar or wind projects. The cost of wind and solar and batteries has just plummeted so quickly. Given the uh, dramatic cost reductions in the renewable and storage technology, we find that the U.S. grid can uh, reach 90% clean share by 2035 without increasing consumer cost. We have an opportunity now for, you know, moving forward with a modern and clean infrastructure without raising customer electricity bills at all from today's levels. So that's an incredible economic recovery opportunity. Renewable and storage cost reductions have arrived much faster than anticipated. Clean energy costs, solar and wind in particular, but critically also energy storage have now fallen so significantly that um, even sort of conservative leaders, conservative states, districts, countries can legitimately look at renewables and actually economically need to look at renewables as their next purchases. In the past, it was assumed that there were only certain places where solar energy would be economical, like the U.S. Southwest and that wind energy would perform best if sited in the Great Plains. But the price of renewables has dropped so much that cost-effective renewables are, have become available ubiquitously across the country. So most of the new electricity generation coming online today is coming from wind and solar. Dr. Leah Stokes is an expert on the politics of clean energy and author of the book, Short-Circuiting Policy. So policy is necessary for all these changes. And we also need programs that provide money for people to retrofit their homes, to get gas out of their homes, to make them more efficient. That kind of public policy creates jobs. Think about all the new industries that could grow up if we decided to change the way our buildings are run and make them more efficient. Actually, uh, home energy retrofits and getting fossil gas out of homes could be something that could create an enormous amount of jobs in the United States um, because retrofitting a building requires people to be working in the United States. Such significant investments in the U.S. power system can lead to significant increase in the jobs in the energy sector. I think we need to forgive fossil fuels. We are demonizing them right now. We are getting the fossil fuel industry sort of backed into a corner. And honestly, the most people in this country who know how to build infrastructure at scale are in the fossil fuel industry. CARES Act and other stimulus bills were spending more money than Joe Biden's entire 10-year climate plan. And it's really called into question this idea that we don't have the money to address something like climate change. We do have money. If you actually ask, should, should it be a problem for us to uh, borrow more? for now and to service that debt afterwards, the, the arithmetic says no problem, that it's, it's easily handled. So I, that's, the, the, debt, uh, the debt implications are of my top 10 things to worry about, it's, it's, well, it's not in that top 10 list. Why are we spending $20 billion every year on fossil fuel subsidies that kill people, and particularly black and brown communities across this country? That's a choice, and we could be spending that money on something much better. Every um, million dollars you invest in clean energy creates three times more jobs than if you were going to invest it in fossil fuels. And so this is a much better choice from an economic perspective.